37 rush yards for Ole Udo, Ezra Cleveland, Garrett Bradbury, Mason Cole, and Brian O'Neill. What a job up front. Yeah, good bounce back game for them after Sunday's performance and, and struggled. And like I said, a lot of questions about all the shuffling that took place because of one injury at left tackle. And I was a little surprised they stuck with the same lineup, too, and visiting with Mike Zimmer the other day. And he says, no, we're going with the same group. And, man, they've come out. They've done a nice job. Cousins' pass is picked. Intercepted by Witherspoon. And he just ran out of gas at the 20. And Pittsburgh's not dead yet. Cousins came in with three interceptions all year, and he's got two in this game. And then a 42-yard return by Akella Witherspoon. He's anticipating the slant. He just plays physical once again. Witherspoon just, just knows the slant's coming. He plays it hard. He got a little, yeah, they definitely got a hold of Cousins' face mask there at the end of that play, but... Boy, when, you, when you're throwing that as a quarterback, the, the last thing you're expecting, we saw it happen with Roethlisberger. The worst case scenario, you're thinking that ball's incomplete. Well, there was another worst case scenario. Can the Steelers take advantage? McLeod to the 15 yard line, back to the interception. Well, trying to get a look on what Witherspoon and, and K.J. Osborne as far as the contact and Osborne not continuing to, to run on the, the route, on the slant route, and just opens it up completely for, for what turned into a pretty easy completion for Witherspoon. Rashad Breeland back out there for the Vikings. Haven't seen him in a while. Been sick on the sideline. Pass is caught. Friermuth touchdown against Bashad Breeland. And the Steelers will be compelled to go for two to make it an eight-point game. Well, we'll go back and we take a look at the interception that sets up that touchdown throw by Roethlisberger. Osborne, he just kind of gets stumbled, and, and then Witherspoon's able to, to jump it. Here's the touchdown. Breland goes down. Thought there might have been contact, but there really wasn't. It, it's a good route by Friermuth. Now, this is big. One for four on the year on two-point tries, including 0 for 1 tonight. Ben throws for Johnson, and it's an eight-point game. In under 13 minutes, the Pittsburgh Steelers have scored 28 points. That's right. And Fryermuth has more touchdown catches than all the other rookie tight ends. I really like combined. him. I really like this guy. I like what he's done. He, he's really had a nice rookie year. They come back here on the two-point conversion, and Roethlisberger in the pocket. He he doesn't move all that well. Gets a little pressure on his left side. Up front, the protection is really good, but because Roethlisberger can't slide. As Roethlisberger's trying to move, watch him. Here comes the pressure. Roethlisberger has good protection across the front on this side, but he doesn't move all, all that well these years at, at 18 years in, but he does enough, and he finds Deontay Johnson, who frees himself up. This is pretty impressive that Pittsburgh's even made this into a ball game. You know what's funny is you mentioned how that delay of game that led to a punt by the Steelers may have benefited Pittsburgh. Instead of going for it on fourth down, they punted. Vikings get the ball, get a couple of nice runs by Cook. They throw it. The interception happens. And seconds later, they're in the end zone, and this is all of a sudden an eight-point game. And you really go back even further than that, Joe. When, when all this began to turn is when Najee Harris on third and three got held up in the pocket. The best third down run I commented on. Yeah. He picks up the first down a few plays later. 
you know, they're scoring a touchdown, and, and they've been kind of rolling ever since. Here's Cook. He is met at the line of scrimmage and lost a yard. Miles Killebrew made that stop. Here it is again, record in one score games for the Vikings four and seven. They've been involved in 11 of them. The only exception, the week three win over Seattle, 13 points, while the Steelers have gone six, one and one. Hey, and don't think for a minute that these players aren't aware of all that. They've suffered through all of that. And it's running through all their minds right now. Cousins throws and the pass is caught. Short of first down yardage by Osborne, who has the 62-yard touchdown. And there's a penalty flag down on the play. Holding. Offense. Wow. Number 74. It's a 10-yard penalty. Replay second down. Boy, the terrible towels are starting to be waved. Here at this stadium, all the Steelers fans that are in attendance. There's the hold. Uh, Mike Zimmer is just, he's not believing what he's watching. Taco Charlton is the one who drew the holding call against Ole Udo. Getting that start out at left tackle. Second and 21 as a result. And Cousins, who has two completions the entire half and two interceptions, completes to Jefferson up to the 25. Arthur Marlette with a stop after a gain of 12. Well, they're playing, you know, soft coverage one-on-one, -on -one, and they run Jefferson on that, that shallow crosser. They could take it down the field. I got to believe that Pittsburgh's going to give a little bit of a different look. They got Jefferson again in the slot. Now they give the safety help here. Cameron Sutton across from him on third down and nine. Cousins, pass caught. What a game for Dalvin Cook. And no bigger first down for the Vikings than that. Well, he's trying to double here on Jefferson, and so now you've got him through the middle. It's a, it's a really nice call. He, he's... You see all that field that he has to work with. That's an outstanding call by Clint Kubiak. Just a really good job on his part. It's Marcus Allen who's who's in coverage one on one. Well, it's nice when you got running backs like him that 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 can win in the passing game because you get some of those favorable matchups against linebackers. Boy, they needed a play to overcome that holding penalty by Udo. Just a really nice call by the young offensive coordinator, Clint Kubiak. I mean, that's a 17-yard completion to a guy that's coming off the shoulder injury wearing a harness on that left shoulder. And he made the catch, survived the hit, and got the first down. Timeout taken by the Steelers. They have two left. Here's Madison wrapped up. Play made by Joe Schobert. No game. Timeout taken by the Steelers, their second. Sunday on Fox, the fight for the NFC East continues. As Zach Prescott leads the Cowboys into a huge showdown against Taylor Heineke and the Washington football team or other regional action. Check local listings for the game in your area only on Fox and the Fox Sports app. There's that game on the far left. Brady and the box host the Bills on CBS late. Aaron Rodgers... Hosting the Bears, Justin Fields getting the start on Sunday Night Football on NBC, and the big one in the NFC West for the Rams and the top-seeded Cardinals on ESPN Monday Night Football. Second and ten, Madison. Short gain of two. Another big third down coming up. And the final timeout is taken by the Steelers. With 2.30 to go. Now it all comes down to whether or not Minnesota can pick up a first down. If they're able to, they'll be able to run the clock out.
If not, one more chance for Pittsburgh. Well, we told you that Minnesota's good TV. <laughs> it just took a while tonight. <laughs> My, Mike Zimmer's getting a little bit tired of them being good TV. Yeah, he'd like he'd like an easy one, but nothing's ever easy in this league. When it is, it's rare. Third down and eight. Blitz off the edge. Pass is incomplete. And a flag in the secondary. Arthur Marlette was coming on the blitz, and they throw a flag in the secondary. And now the two officials talk it over. There's Mollette coming on the blitz. There is no foul in the play. And they pick the flag up. up fourth down. I think I think that's a good job by those officials. You see Mollette, he doesn't want to do anything. He got a free shot. He's careful about how he's going to come in on Cousins. And there was a little bit of a grab, but I, I'd sure hate to be making that call in this situation of the game. I, I think the officials did a good job getting together, talking about it, and picking it up. Good coverage by Minka Fitzpatrick on K.J. Osborne. And the punt from Jordan Berry. Good one. McLeod lets it go over his head. And it's down to inside the five near the two. 53-yard punt. They place it at the... Well, they keep moving it forward. Looked like they downed it at the two, and now the official's near the three. Either way, what a job by Jordan Berry. Yeah, right there. Yeah. Well, I don't have to remind Vikings fans that no team has given up more points inside of two minutes than their Vikings. But if Pittsburgh's going to do it, eh, they're going to earn every bit of it. They put it at the four. That's where it was first touched by Minnesota. 96 yards away, plus a two-point conversion. Two minutes, 16 seconds, no timeouts. Quick throw, pass is behind, high, and caught. As Najee Harris shows you how good his hands are. A gain of six and a little breathing room. Boy, you're not kidding. That, that catch would have been tough for Justin Jefferson. Najee Harris be able to come, you know, for a running back to catch this hot ball behind him. Pretty good. Up to the 10. Here's one aired out for Claypool. And contact in a flag. Bashad Breland again in coverage. Wow. They're going to take a shot. Breland's playing soft coverage. Doesn't know the ball's coming. Doesn't locate it at all. And, uh, uh, you know, That's throw it up. And Defense number 21. The penalty's declined. There's only plays a catch. First down. They call it a catch. Either way, the ball's going to be at that spot at the 48. What a grab. That's a second strong catch by Claypool this half. That's an amazing catch. They get the P.I. regardless, but but a, a great, great job on his part. They bring a five-man rush. Minnesota does. The offensive line blocks it up pretty good, and they just let it go. 38 yards. Still outside of two minutes. Quick throw to Claypool on the other side. Flag on the play. With two minutes left. And the Vikings believe it's against the Steelers. Could be for a hold out there on the edge. Illegal block in the back. Offense, number 77. A 10-yard penalty. 
Replay first down. This is the two-minute warning. Getting his first NFL start, LeGlue. With a block in the back right there. He comes right in on, on the left side of the screen. That's a good call. Wasn't, wasn't necessary either. He blocked McKenzie Alexander in the back, and that will back the ball up to the Pittsburgh 40. Let's look at a recap. Game absolutely dominated by the Vikings early, and in particular by him, Dalvin Cook. But the comeback started. There's that 62-yarder to K.J. Osborne. Friermuth with a catch. And it was followed up by the two-point conversion to make it an eight-point game. And the largest comeback win in regular season history, 28 points. This was a 29 to nothing game tonight late in the third quarter. Well, the lesson in this is you just keep playing. I mean... That's that's what you do. You just keep playing. We've seen this, you know, not to this degree, but you always see a team make a run and make a game out of it. Pittsburgh, boy, they seemed like they were left for dead early in that third quarter, and they just they just kept playing. Roethlisberger for Harris broke one tackle and takes it to the 41. Kenzie Alexander couldn't bring him down initially. Willikis there for the stop. No timeouts. Second and 17. Good protection. Claypool to the 45. 13 yards. Well, we talked to Mike Zimmer, and he said he was going to play these situations as though it was third and seven and give some of the, the mug linebackers we saw earlier in the game not play the soft coverage, but they've gone back to more soft coverage. you got got safeties playing deep. Nice catch by McLeod. It's fourth down and no timeouts. Fourth down and one. No timeouts. Ben goes right. He knows right away what he wants. What he wants here on this fourth down to get one yard. Pass caught by Claypool. First down. Clock running. And it may come up and clock it now. There he goes. They got it. Now the balls. They, they, they can't get the ball to the official. He's trying to scramble to get it set. And that stops the clock with 24 seconds remaining. Here's that previous play, a slant route, and pretty easy completion. Not, not really contested too much there on the outside. Boy, they have identified Bashad Breland, who was out sick on the sideline, as somebody they are wanting to attack. They've done that since he came back in the game. And for the second straight week, Big Ben has gotten hot late. He's still going to safeties. He's trying to keep from giving anything up deep. Underneath, it's McLeod, and he sprints to the sideline, and he's out of bounds. And he got 10. Really nice job, McLeod knowing exactly the situation. Doesn't try to get it up the field and keep the clock running. Gets, the, gets as much as he can and gets out of bounds. Ball inside the 24 with 16 seconds left. Yeah, he's got to be real careful working in the middle of the field. But, you know, that completion was big because here at, at 25 yards, if they got protection, they, they can get some shots with chances to score from here. Here's one for Washington. Nearly picked. Incomplete. And Breland again with Xavier Woods defending. Well, I was surprised that ball wasn't picked off. I didn't know if it's Breland or Woods who's coming across. Uh, they're both fighting for it. Woods thought he was going to get the interception. Should have had it. Goes through his hands. You see the safeties. Even with Woods cheating across, 
Roethlisberger, he knows that Woods is in a position to make a play. He's going to give his guy a chance. That play took five seconds. Two more shots maybe to the end zone. Underneath, it's Johnson. And he is able to break a tackle and get out of bounds and give Pittsburgh hope with two seconds left. Well, the missed tackle gives them one more chance. Peterson missed the tackle. Oh, he's he's right there in a position to make this play. If he gets tackled inbounds, game over. He he just just not very good. You got three, three Vikings right there to make a play, and here it is. From the 12, they put a second back on the clock. Last play, barring a defensive foul. End zone, fire move, incomplete. Vikings win it. The two safeties, Smith and Woods, combined to deliver the hit and deny Pat Fryermuth his second touchdown of the game. And this ends an eight-point final, 36-28. It's pretty good. On this play, Minnesota brings a five-man rush, and Roethlisberger with pressure really does all he can. I mean, he lays this... Wow. As good as he could possibly put it for Fryermuth to have a chance. I mean, a good route by Fryermuth, and this ball is perfect. And you know, you know the windows are tight. You know you're going to take a hit, but he gave him a chance. And Fryermuth just not able to hang on to it as Harrison Smith comes in and knocks it out. What a play!